Tuna Real Talk. All right, we're on. You just saw the latest episode of Wicked Tuna, and now it's time for Wicked Tuna Real Talk, where some of the best bluefin captains in the business get their chance to weigh in. I'm your host, Mike Salk, and joining us this week, Captain Tyler McLaughlin of the Pinwheel, Captain TJ Ott of the Hot Tuna, and of course, Captain Dave Carrero of the fishing vessel Tuna.com. Thank you for coming in, gentlemen, on this last episode. We saw the bite up north in Maine, Maine waters, and the fleet descended on the crowd hotspot. A couple of fireworks in there as well. Tyler, we'll start with you because it was your call. This is sort of your comfort zone up off Platts there in Maine. How, wh- how did you make the decision to get up there, and, and how comfortable are you there? Well, you know, I'm really comfortable fishing up there. Did some fishing up there when I was a kid. Obviously, I did a lot of fishing up there when I worked for TJ. And I went up there this year and I saw the whales, I saw the life, my first line out, I caught a fish, and it's just been magic for me ever since. Why aren't you there more often? I mean, if, it, if that's your ultimate comfort zone, why don't you go there more often? In Maine, everything is like situational. The fish will start on one hump and then they'll slowly move inshore and keep b- bouncing around in different spots. It's kind of like an early season spot. This is the first year that we've really ever seen the bite last as long as it did on Platts. And Platts is a difficult place to figure out and it's given a lot of people trouble. You think you feel more comfortable there than you do closer to Gloucester? Absolutely. I, unless I'm fishing out in front of my home harbor. I feel really confident on Platts, and I want anyone who thinks they can come give me a run for my money to try. Well, you mentioned you fished there a lot with TJ, and it sure seemed like TJ was going to give you a run for your money there. Yeah, trust me, I'm worried about him up there. He knows it a lot better than I did. He's deadly up there, there's no doubt about it. I just hope that I can contain. I'm not really worried about it, to be honest with you. Do you worry about anything? I mean, that doesn't feel like it's saying nah, He's got like a luxury liner out there. No, but I mean, I'm not going to, you know, I, he, he, hey, we're tackling the guy with the ball. He found the meat, and, and where we were fishing, teetered out, and you know we got to go find him. But at the same time, Platts is a big spot too. So if it gets crowded in one spot, move down the bank. I mean, I caught fish all around that bank this year. So everywhere it, I moved, it, it was a very productive spot. A lot of fish came off of it, and uh, I'm happy I went and mugged Tyler up. I don't think we've ever seen it like that before. No, no it's, it's never lasted like that throughout August into September. It's never been that consistent. Usually, the blue sharks take over and the big pollock and and you just can't get it done, you know. Well, I want to get to your first catch there because that was kind of an interesting one. We'll get to that in a moment. The middle of the night was trying to eat dinner on his buddy's boat. But Dave, this is not your comfort zone. I mean, we get to see you. You you like to be in your spot, doing your own thing. Doesn't matter what the rest of the fleet is doing. And the guys in your boat are kind of egging you. Well, come on, man, this is where the bite is. What finally made you crack and head up there? I mean, I got to do what I got to do. If I'm not catching fish where I am in shore, I like to stay in shore and not burn fuel. I'm here to make money. But if I got to go up to Maine to catch fish, I'm going to do what I got to do. But again, these guys have been fishing there a lot longer than I am. Mm-hmm. And as we discussed in other episodes, you know, every spot doesn't fish the same as the other. So for me to go up there, it's going gonna, it's gonna to take me some time. Good chance I might get up there and watch everybody else fighting the fish, you know, and we're just going to sit there and do nothing. But you know, as a fisherman, I think I can get dialed in there and, you know, think we can get it done. TJ used the phrase you were chasing the bite, that you chase the bite up there, and that, that doesn't seem like you, right? I mean, I, I, it reminded me of a baseball player who gets caught in between. You start guessing curveball versus fastball. Yep. The next thing you know, <laughs> you don't know what's coming next, and, and you're totally off kilter. Can you get that way fishing where, hey, do I trust myself or do I try something new? Sure. I, I, I typically don't chase the news. I like to make the news. But where I was fishing, I was definitely not making the news. You know, we were taking us news. It was time to move. It was time to go on, time to go up there figure it out and make something happen. If we continued staying where we were, it was a no-win. I guess I don't know if you guys play roulette. That was the other thing I found myself thinking of. It's like, okay, it's come up red 20 times in a row and I keep betting black. Do I switch to red or do I stay with black yeah. thinking it's You're gonna, gonna play come head up games eventually? with yourself. We, we all do, hey. we all do. He had to do it. I mean, really, I will give Dave credit. He never chases bites. He, he stays and does his thing and he's successful at doing that. But when you're hearing day in and day out, guys coming in with fish, mm-hmm you got to go check it out. I mean, you never know, you know, and you got to remember, we're fishermen, so we're going to downplay it. And a lot of other guys are oh, yeah, well, it wasn't that good. I got one. But yeah, then you hear sharks. about the other 10 that were caught there that yeah. you didn't know about. So you got to go check it out. Do you, uh, do you, is there a level of pride in being the one that found the spot as opposed to being the one sure. that gets there later? Yeah, you're Are you embarrassed there. if you're showing up and, and to, to chase the bike? Yeah, look at him steaming in. Here he comes from the west, you know. You see him coming in, definitely, you know, laugh at him. They're he didn't see show. me until like noontime. He was sleeping. Oh, we were catching him at night. 
Working hard out you there, You can catch man. tunas at night? No. Not a few. Really? Really? I don't okay. I, I try. Well, we watched you catch one at night here, and, and it's kind of a bizarre situation, right? I mean, you're trying to have dinner on your buddy's boat. You got your one of your one of your guys, one of your crew members, David, is sitting there. He's still he's not even on your boat. He's got to jump across <laughs> in the middle of the night, which he said was worth it, and I'm not sure I agree with that. Well, you know, flat calm conditions. You can We go boat to boat like that all the time. You all know, right. Middle people. of the night, no big deal? No, no big deal. I mean, okay. we're fishermen. We live out on the water. I mean, you know, you're going to... We're, we're good with handling our boats, and we can drop people off and transfer people, no problem. Well, you end up with an 110-inch fish, so fighting it in the middle of the night, how great was that battle? Wonderful battle. I mean, night tuna fishing is awesome. They're all over up on top. They're pie in the water column. It's really good, you know? It's just hard to see them when they get around the boat, but there's nothing better than catching a fish at night. For me, it's relieving. Why, why night? I mean, what is it? Is it just, is it more exciting? Yeah, it just doesn't happen too often, and it just, it's just nice to be like, wow, these things eat at night, and you know, it's, it's a bonus. the boat at night, it's cool. It's a bonus. Bonus fish. Yeah. Because they don't eat that much at night. Is that uh, it? They're, they're in certain spots, so up on Platts, they do historically bite a little more at night than during the day, but I mean, I catch a very small percentage of fish at night, and I think we all, you know, it's just, just cool. You know, you're planning on catching your fish when the sun's up, you know, and then all of a sudden you wake up in the middle of the night, or you're having dinner, and the rod laps over, and you got mm -hmm. a paycheck. I'm tickled. I mean, What's better than you that? You keep somebody awake all night just to monitor that? Yeah, or yeah. somebody has to stay awake. Someone's, someone's, someone's awake. always somebody awake has to stay awake. Yeah. Making sure, you know, there's not ships and freighters coming through, or other boats, you know, you don't want to get run over at night. Obviously, we have lots of lights and stuff like that to try and show people where we're at. But So everyone's just sort of anchored up together in the, yeah, in the a, middle of the night like that? There's like a yeah. high spot that everyone tries to get up on top of, and it seems the other boats kind of filter in. But the guys that are in the spot, those are the ones that are getting the bite. It became a zoo, for sure. It did. Really? It yeah. was Guggenville. <laughs> It was. I've heard that phrase a few times. You want to explain it to everybody? <laughs> just that boats running everywhere. I don't know who coined it, who started it, you know? It, it's just like a, a weekend warrior kind of hoople. Someone that Hey, there's a here. boat that catches fish. I'm going to go anchor up there. Yeah. Pretty much, you know. It can get pretty bad. It can get pretty crowded. Yeah. As we saw this It's summer. like fleas attacking you. <laughs> Why are you guys so passionate about your spot? I mean, uh, TJ, we found this a little bit with you in this one. He's like, yeah, Tyler, he may say he knows Platts, but I sort of taught him Platts. Why are you guys so I, passionate you know, about your spot? I remember having some big days on Platts when he was in the back. Oh, yeah, 15 we in a week. We caught lots of tunas on Platts. Who's the most territorial captain in the fleet? TJ. I, I think <gasps> we all are. Are you? Doc Hammer, Stell Wagon, It's just a mind thing, you know? Like, yep. you want to be on that spot where you've produced in the past. You're comfortable. And, and re reality, you may be a quarter mile down the bank and do just as good, but it's just, it's going to screw you up in the head. So yep. you just want to be constantly back in that area where you know you're produced. Well so what, do you th what are you thinking? You're there, you've caught a fish in the middle of the night, the word gets out. First of all, how does the word get out? How does everybody find buyers. out? That you're tuna, tuna buyers. Tuna buyers. They let everybody tuna know. Yeah. Other, other boats that see you catch fish, yeah. they're calling their buddies just to be heroes because they can't catch a fish, but they can give someone some information. Uh -huh. And that's what, that's like beating on their the chest. The buyers are the worst. So these are the same guys you're going and bringing the fish to, the guys yeah, you see looking at, oh, there's too much fat in the mine, there's not enough in the mages. Yep. These guys? Yeah, they work these guys. The more fish they take in, the more money they make. Okay. So they may say, oh, don't worry, I won't say nothing. And then the minute they oh, walk away, yeah. hey, hey, the phone's you know. ringing. Got him, you if he's, fight, if he's fighting a fish, my buyer's calling me, telling really? me that he's So they're up. just big gossipers? Yes. Huh. Because they want us out fishing. Tuna they whispers, want, they want I call all, them. They the tuna whispers, because they're whispering whispers. everybody else about yeah, what's going on. Everyone's business, everything going on. They want on. us catching fish. Yeah, we catch fish, ah, they make money. I see the racket. Okay, so they let everybody know, Tyler, you're there, you've caught a fish, a big one in the middle of the night, and all of a sudden you wake up in the morning and half the fleet is there. It what isn't. goes through your mind? <laughs> just sickness. I just want to start, like, puking. I mean, it's terrible when you got a spot all to yourself, you're only boat there, and you wake up and there's 20 boats on either side of you. Greatly hey, reduces that make your it? odds. Yeah, now you got all these lines in the water. Mm -hmm. That's going to put the fish down. They're not going to be as comfortable in their feeding cycle. Mm -hmm. it makes it difficult. Are you more worried that somebody else is going to catch a fish, or that somebody's going to that is going to make it more difficult for you to catch because of Both. once it's on the line, it's going to end up rubbing the line. Well, somehow. I mean, now we got these boats up here with light line out and different things, educating the fish, losing them, not knowing how to handle big fish like that. Mm. And you know, if they get hooked once, they get out of there. They ain't coming That's back it. around. Yep. So these people are educating the fish that don't have the skills or the terminal tackle to land a big tuna fish that's 110 inches. We also saw you, TJ, help Dave out. I mean, Dave's sort of out of his comfort zone there. He went up there, didn't have all of his stuff, didn't have enough water, didn't have enough ice. And for you, you said, I mean, you kind of were clear, hey, Dave looks to be a little out of his element. You asked a couple uh -huh. of questions, but at the end of the day, you help a guy who needs some help. It's a high seas courtesy, man. I, you know, I, I know he'd do it for me, and I, he spent a lot of money to get there. He is my competition, but ultimately, I'd like to see everyone be successful out there. And, and if I could help him s prolong his trip and quite possibly get a fish, I'm going to do it. And I do it for Tyler as well. I do it for Marciano. I do it for Paul. We do it for everyone. We do it for each other. We all got to coexist out there and help each other. You know, out. I know what it's like to go home with your tail between your legs with no fish in the hole. And 
it's a terrible feeling. So as much as I don't want him to really smoke me, I, I definitely did help him right. out. And I, but I felt good about him. And hopefully the karma comes around for me. It yep. seemed like kind of a rare moment of weakness for you, Dave. I mean, you're a pretty confident guy in general. It seemed like, I don't want to say you felt like you didn't know what was going on, but you seemed a little more vulnerable than we're used to seeing. Yeah, you know, I mean, I was in a bad spot. You know, it's just things weren't happening. Going, going up there, like you said, I'm a little out of my element. I don't know much about the bottom. I don't know much about, you know, the bite, daytime, nighttime, what bait, what hook. You know, it just, I was, I was out of it. But, you know, TJ was nice enough to help me out, give me some ice, and I could prolong my stay. Again, I was staying inside. I wasn't planning on being out for a few days. I wasn't planning on going that far. Mm -hmm. You know, so ice was a critical factor, as was fuel. You also have a new mate on your boat at this point. Jordy is yep. just running the second week or so on yep. the boat. How's that working out? Great. You know, Jordy, Jordy has some experience. You know, he's, he, he's proven himself already, and uh, I'm going to give him a shot at it. I think he's going to be a great asset to the boat. Well, well, you guys were fighting for territory up in Maine. You weren't the only ones. We also saw the Harpoon guys getting after Ooh. each other quite a bit. And, and Hollywood just attracts trouble, right? I mean, what is it about him that just attracts some of the anger, bitterness, competition that seems to fall yeah, in wherever well, he goes. He, he's, he's not very quiet <laughs> either. So, yeah. I mean, we love Wood, but he, he does definitely look for it. And those guys that he, he's fighting with there are very prominent figures in the harpoon industry. He's got the best, best harpooner yeah. in Maine chasing they're, him out of Maine. They're anti-plane. Right. They're not for the planes. They, they do them. it all on visual. They're very they're talented good guys, and they're, they're probably the best at that. Yeah, so but there's Woody, a little Woody's excel too. Woody's, Woody's pretty damn good too. Yeah, but I'm just saying the they plane. don't use a plane. Right, yeah. You know, but, these but, main you know. guys are anti plane big time. So, Why? just because it gives of you the a huge challenge? advantage. Yeah, right. they, these guys are out there, you know, they're doing it the way they did, the primitive way, seeing them by sight and chasing them down, whereas Woody's getting called into where the herds are. And, and nothing against the plane. I mean, I would love to have a plane if I had a harpoon boat. So, but for the, Woody to go up there with his plane and stick a fish right in front of them, they don't like that very much. It, it, it yeah. looks to me like the difference between business and fun, right? Like, like if you're going to have a plane, it's a business decision to go catch as many as you can, as opposed to yeah. the challenge of trying to go out there. Well, well those guys without a plane do just as good as some of the guys with the plane. Really? Yes, sir. That boat right yep. there, yes, sir. They're a top producing boat. That boat he was fighting with are some of the best harpooners in the game. Have you guys done that? Have you gone out and harpooned? Yeah, I have. Yeah, I've, I've done, done it. I've, done, been on I've a boat done some harpooning with TJ. We had TJ driving. I was up there throwing. I think really? I was, I was even barely strong enough the whole time. <laughs> How hard is that? I mean, is it a, di it's a different type of hard. harpoon very than you guys hard. have Super, on your boats, right? You know, there's refraction in the water column. Right. You know, you gotta throw out. And you gotta run up and back in that thing. And sometimes and that pole it's that really it's, dangerous. It's not stable. It when you're sitting stable. up there, it's very, it's very wobbly. If you fall off, the boat's running you over. Right. There are guys from the Cape that that can do it in their sleep. I mean, really? Yeah. It's an art. It's an art. It, it, no doubt I know about a lot it. of people think it's it's not it's not fair and it's cheating, but Those it guys is extremely too. difficult. The best in the business have been throwing that harpoon since they were little kids. So yeah. why'd you get into the rod and reel stuff instead of that? I mean, technique. What, what, just I like it. You just like what you do better. I don't want to drive around and look for tunas all day. I want to deploy baits for them and try and trick them and get them to eat chum and do things. I mean, I've got huge respect for the harpooners. I think it's it's phenomenal what yeah. they do. How big a fleet is that? How many people are doing they're, they're, that? Well, there's a different quota early. That's a small quota. I mean, there's quite a few harpoon boats, but there's 40, 50 only a couple handfuls of guys that are extremely successful at it. Yeah. Hollywood Plenty of Googans in that racket, too. <laughs> yeah. And I think the big thing for us, why we didn't choose harpooning, I mean, there's a lot of restrictions on it. If it's not sunny and it's not mm -hmm. calm, you cannot harpoon. We can fish in all types of weather. So those guys could get held up at the dock for two weeks at yeah. a time. Mm -hmm. They could lose the whole season. As the water warms up, you know, the fish push down in the water column where they're not up running, digesting like they are early in the season when the water's colder. So they have a very small window to make a lot of money. It does seem like they got a lot of big fish, though. It they seems do. like a lot of the fish they, they got were well, really they can pick some them. of the biggest ones they, that, they, that are out there. They get to see them right in front of them. They, they can pick which one they want, you know? It's pretty amazing, really. And, and those guys have been really critical in collecting data for us over the years, the planes and, <laughs> you know, while we're fighting for quota with the government and stuff. Those guys... Without them, we might have lost our quota a long time ago. Yep. The other thing that seems interesting that strikes me is they, they are seeing big schools of fish, right, where they get three, five at a time. Based on that, it surprises me that you guys don't have more dual hookups where you get two fish on the line. Well, we the can't catch those fish. Those fish you They do not eat. Yeah. They do not eat. Those fish are already done eating. They're up in the upper water column in the nice warm water, warming their core temperatures, and they're also digesting their food. Got they're it. done. And we can see them on some calm days. We'll see them up running. You know, not, even without having a tower, but <laughs> you can throw bait in front of them all day, 
and, and they'll pretend like it's not even there. They're cruising. They're yeah. full. They don't need it anymore. They're in a different state of mind. They're All right. up digesting. Well, they're done. We're done as well, at least for today. Guys, that's all the time we have. I want to thank all three of you. Captain Tyler McLaughlin of the Pinwheel, TJ Ott, Captain of the Hot Tuna, and, of course, Captain Dave Carrero of the Fishing Vessel Tuna.com. Thank you all for being with us. You can go to natgeotv.com slash realtalk to catch all of the Real Talk episodes. We're going to be back again next week right after the all-new episode episode of Wicked Tuna on National Geographic Channel Sundays at 9 o'clock. Pinwheel's first mate, David, will question his future on the boat and veteran boat Bounty Hunter makes a return as well. Tyler and Dave will be back. Captain Dave Marciano as well of the hard merchandise. Get your Wicked Tuna fix by liking us on Facebook or following us on Twitter to get daily updates. We'll see you next time on Wicked Tuna Real Talk.